um, what we must understand is that chords are just notes from a major scale that have had two of three things done to them, or one or two or three things done. They've either had something added, something altered or something taken away, or added and altered or taken away and altered. So in the case of a major chord, you take a major scale and you take away all the notes except the first, third and fifth. Yeah? If I want to make a seventh chord, A7, what I'm really saying is I want to make a dominant seven. We just don't say the word dominant because we're lazy, yeah? And to make something dominant, you flatten the seventh note of a major scale and you add that to your one, three, and five. So instead of one, three, five, you get one, three, five, seven. Does that make sense? So, again, the same thing would happen. If I was playing, or Ollie was playing a seven for me, and I didn't know that that flat seventh note was important, and I played the major seventh. We get that really lovely. Yeah, we all agree that's not lovely at all. We get the same, get the same situation. Even worse if we get the. Uh, yeah. Sounds even nicer if we've got that. So it's important to understand these notes: one, three, minor three, four, five, dominant seven, and starts all over again. Yeah. So, we have to understand then that if there's only seven notes that can be used in any given key, and that's essentially what we're saying, we need to understand how to manipulate those seven notes. Yeah? So let's say I'm playing, or Ollie here is playing an A9 chord for me. The notes in an A9 chord are the one, Three, the five, which no one cares about. One, three, five, because it's a major chord, so it's not one minor three, five, otherwise we're going to get our same clash. One, three, five. But A9 is really called a dominant ninth, which is lazy, so don't say the word dominant. So it's got the flat seven in it. So it's one, three, five, flat seven, and then on the top of that, a nine. Yeah? So, when we have that chord, the important notes shift a little bit. So we have, instead of the one again, doesn't matter too much, the three, very important. If we play the wrong three, it's going to sound rubbish. The seven is important, because it's dominant, but the ninth becomes a bit more important than the seventh in my brain. Yeah? So we'll just play a nine chord, we'll do it on the on one, two, three, four, and I'm just going to play the nine. In fact, what I'll do is I'll play the one, then we'll do it again, I'll play the three, then I'll play the flat seven, then I'll play the nine. And you can hear your own ears which note I play has more of what I call a pull on the chord, yeah? So here we go, one, two, three, four. So that's one. It sort of sinks into it, doesn't it? The three, one, two, three, four. Might be a slight tuning issue on that string, just very slightly. The flat seven, one, two, three, four. The nine. One, two, three, four. See how my nine just kind of sticks out a little bit more. I mean, it was a, it was a, a treble a note, a top of your note, because I was on a thin string. But it, it, it sounds more, doesn't it? Yeah. So, if I understand then that those notes are contained within a certain scale, a certain mode. I can feel safer to use that mode because I know that those notes are in it, I'm not going to trip over myself. Does that make sense? It's about playing in the right box. So the mode which would contain those notes for me would be mixolydian, the mixolydian mode. So in the key of A that would be this. Play the minor third at the end, then slide out. You hear the dissonance. So there you go. Yeah, you can hear that, and it works perfectly. A lot of blues players think they're playing a minor pentatonic when they're playing that mode, and what they do is that they'll, they'll play a minor pentatonic. So Ollie will play an A9 for me. So they'll go. 